Hey guys, it's John, your Tennessee Flying Farmer. We're on day 12 of the build challenge. Um, today, today I'm working on heat. Well, actually, no, not that kind of heat. I'm working on this kind of heat. This is the heater for the airplane, so let's get started. This guy's good. Now, here's our farmer, John Humbred. Look at that! Oh my God! That was good. Whoa. Today's gonna to be a short video. I guess I've, I kind of deserve that since I posted such a crazy long video yesterday. Anyway, to be honest, I haven't got really anything done on this airplane today. Um, it's a little after three o'clock in the morning and I've been up here a, a few hours now and I've been really struggling over this, how I'm gonna make the cabin heat work on this thing. Um, man, it's just, there's no room. I ran out of room. So basically this is a pretty common cabin heat box. Um, just work it with a cable and it either allows the hot air from, from your system to go into the cabin or you pull the valve, push the valve however you set it up and close it so it can't get into the cabin. Pretty standard, pretty standard item. There's a bunch of different configurations of them. So basically there's, there's what's called a heater muff that goes around the stainless exhaust collector. You send cold air through that heater muff and it comes out the other side where it's picked up heat off of the stainless um, exhaust system and then you send that that charged hot air into this box and this box either sends it through the cabin or it sends it out the bottom of the bottom of the cow and so the basics are this box normally normally bolts to the fastens to the firewall and well I'm just out of firewall space, guys. I've got a tiny bit of space right here underneath the intercooler, but the engine mount doesn't allow me to put it there because this box, it's, it's just bulky enough. It won't fit there with the cabin frame. Um, I could put it down in the lower corner, but I, I don't like that either because it's all on one side and I really don't want to install two. So you also still have to consider there are brake pedals and all kinds of systems there'll be you know it'll be wiring and fuel systems and all kinds of stuff that that needs to be away from and and not interfere with so anyway that side's completely tied up come around to this side and of course the turbo is stuffed in there so tight there's just there's no way um the only other place i can see is right back in here and you can see there's there's a brace where this rivet line is, so I can't I can't put it directly through that. There's not enough room here to put it because it hits cabin frame, or I'm, excuse me, because it hits the engine mount. You've got your steering rods and the that come from the brake pedals out to this nose strut here. So I've got one little V right there that I think could potentially hold this little heater box. And there's only, I mean, you, I've got maybe an inch of wiggle room where I could, I don't even know if I have a full inch or not, because it's, we're looking at hitting intakes and all kinds of stuff. And you can see how close it's getting, even to the heater muff at this point, the, the exhaust collector's right there really close. So once I get all this kind of figured out, normally, you know, once this box is mounted on the other side of the firewall, the only part you'll see is this one, two inch hole coming through and the little stub that you can connect something to um it, the setups worked great in my super 701 it's been you know just in, incredibly warm the problem is it's almost gets too warm it, it blows all the hot air right out in that one one localized spot and you know the, the passengers i've had in the 701 if i'm using much heat they said man this is burning my foot so to kind of compensate for that in the in the 701 i built i actually built two or three different ones um I built what I call a diffuser. Uh, actually, this is one of my early iterations of it. I just made a little bit of a curve in it and I basically just put that on top of the part that sticks through the firewall and it, it helps, I don't know if you guys can see there good, but it, it helps get part of that air diverted around to the side. So uh, it, it's worked great in the 701, but it's still still not the optimum answer for what I'm looking for. I, the heat distribution has always been something that I've kind of wanted to work on and get get better, especially for this airplane. I want the heat distribution to you know to come in there and and be nice. So anyway, I've got this stainless 
cabin heat box that I've been staring at really for weeks trying to figure out where, how and where I can make all this work. And I've, I mean, I've even considered building my own from scratch. It's a little different shape and a little different setup as far as inlets and outlets and where all that's located to try and make it, try and make it work. Um, well, long story short, I'm, I'm kind of going to have to think outside the box to make this work. I think I'm going to abandon this completely. I, I've, I'm, I've sit here and looked at this and I've racked my brain and I think it just kind of hit yesterday. I think I'm, I've, I've come up with an idea. I'm going to give it a try. And also a shout out to a couple of the people that I, I brainstorm with occasionally to, to sort of get ideas and to say, Hey, you're an, you're an idiot. That won't work. Or to say, yeah, that might work. Or, you know, I, I need that sometimes. And, uh, anyway, to those, those few people that I do confide with in some of this stuff, you know who you are. I really appreciate you guys. I have this completely off the wall, crazy idea that I think could potentially work for cabin heat in this airplane. It's still going to use the same, same heater muff that comes off of the, the exhaust collector, the, the stainless exhaust collector. So I'll essentially have a duct toward the front of the cowl that will come back and across the exhaust collector, come out the opposite side, and then it'll, it'll have the hot air essentially coming through a piece of the flexible scat tube that will have to be ducted into the cabin. And that's, that's where this is going to be, well, it's going to be a little bit extreme. This is, this is going to jump into a whole nother modification. And I'm not even going to tell you guys yet because I don't want to hear people say, no, that's no, that won't work. Or, um, I'll show you when I get it closer. I, I have high, I have high, high hopes that it's going to work. Um, anyway, no real progress today to show you guys, but I've, I've, the progress has been right here today. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking and brainstorming and trying to come up with some way to make this work and do what I want it to do. So no promises I'll even really be able to show you anything on that tomorrow. I'll probably focus on something else while I'm kind of doing that part in the background. So, well, I'm gonna call it a wrap for today. It's, it is, like I said, it's after three o'clock in the morning. I'm tired and I've been thinking about this all day, even when I've been working at other stuff. So it's, it's time to, it's time to surrender for the night. Again, thank you guys for watching. Comments, I love the comments. Like, share. Um, again, every bit helps on that end too. So I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you next time. See ya. Okay, question and answer time. I've got two questions I'm going to try to hit on today. Uh, one of them being, how am I going to approach the the cow when I get to that point? And I'm granted, I'm still a little ways from there. Um, I will do it just like I approached the Super 701. Essentially what I, what'll happen here is once I get far enough along to figure out where ducting needs to go and all that kind of stuff, sort of have an, a general idea of what I want it to do and look like, I will shrink wrap the engine entirely, get it completely encapsulated in the uh, plastic wrap, the stretch wrap. I'll hot glue, once I get it completely wrapped, I'll, I'll just take the hot glue gun, I'll hot glue some some little pieces of uh, well, it could really be any color. I mean, just whatever color you come up with. The, the, I usually use the cheap stuff that's left over, like from construction or whatever, just like the pink or blue foam or whatever, but hot glue in the places where you're going to need clearance. So say I took that piece and I would hot glue it. So when I start sanding the entire thing back down and I get to this layer, I know there's, whoa, that's as far as I need to go. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll I'll get those pieces hot glued to it on, on all of the high points where I'll want to make sure I don't, don't get down far enough to get into stuff. And then I'll, I will spray foam the entire, the entire thing all the way around. It'll be spray foamed all the way back flush with the, the cabin and all that. After that, I'll essentially just take a belt sander and start whittling on it and getting, getting it formed and shaped and all that stuff the way I think I like it. And it's, that's a long, horrible, I'm going to say it, it is a long, horrible, tedious process, and I'm not looking forward to that at all. And I'm still quite a ways from it, so I still have, you know, some time to think about how and what and shapes and all that kind of stuff. But that'll be the basic process. I have a, a video of spray foaming the other one, and if, I'll, I'll try to put a few pictures of the Super 701 process as we go here. Um, it's a heck of a process. Hopefully now that I've done it, you know, a couple of times making the cow for the Super 701, this one will go a whole lot easier and, and quicker. That's the goal coming up here, hopefully before too terribly long. 
The other question I've got, kind of back to this this um, carbon fiber vinyl or, or just the vinyl overlays on some of this stuff. The question was, do I do I go over or under the rivets? Will this stuff lay a flush over the rivets, or how do I approach that? And I really kind of like the look of having the rivets on top of this black vinyl. It, it gives that little silver on top of the vinyl look, and I'm I'm really not concerned about deterioration on that. I think that's going to be a, a a very good setup. There are a few places I go over the top of the rivet heads. You can kind of see right there on that red carbon fiber look. I've gone over the top of those. It still works well. It can be a little bit of a, a challenge to, to get it squeegee where you get all the air pockets off of it, but it, it does work work well either way. Really just kind of depends on preference. I've seen it done both ways and people have had good good results both ways. So I don't think it can go wrong. I really do like this material though. Like I said, I think it will give it a, a almost a professional finish type look. I'm, I'm anxious to get, I'll have black on the tunnel cover. I think I mentioned this the other day. I'm, I'm excited to get further along with that where I can have the black around the stuff on the instrument panel and the, the center console and all that. I, I think it's gonna really change the, the finished look of this airplane once I get to there. But I'm not gonna do that anytime real soon because I wanna get all of the the build process done. I don't want to take a chance of tearing that up and having to rewrap stuff. Thanks for the questions and I'll see you guys tomorrow.